All right, I got a new script that I might be giving away or selling. I don't know. I'll probably give it away. Bam. It's ready. The end. It's pre Twix. It's time to wrap. All I need to do is change the graph. Let's go. That's all in DaVinci. Let's see. Pull it up. Uh, let me just find it somewhere. It's all because of this guy's tutorials. Asher Roland. I've already mentioned him in my Discord announcements, but man, I've been learning so much stuff from this guy. I've been looking at so many DaVinci Resolve scripts and stuff just beforehand, but I didn't know anything about coding. I was just looking at it. I'm like trying to figure out how it works in my own head. And once once you made that basics to Lua for DaVinci Resolve, oh my God, everything clicked. It's just, I mean, you, you, you see me in your server. I've been just like asking questions and just going at it. I've been, I've read probably half the scripting guide, but yeah, all this stuff, that whole script. I made it. I'm so proud. I could probably optimize it more, but I like how I have it annotated and everything. So if I even give it to someone, hopefully they can understand, even if they're, they're brand new to it. I even have like documentations and stuff. I even you there as well. But yeah, that's been fun. Kind of helping. Scripting sucks with how little documentation are there for it. More beginner videos to come. Let's go. Important question. What would DaVinci Resolve type beat sound like? Oh man. That's, that's funny you mentioned that because I actually was sent a song that was, oh, I won't spoil it for you. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, Can you hear that? Yeah. I don't know who made this y'all hear that the software top of the line with features so grand and truly divine color grading magic notes like a tree no other program can compare to me from editing timelines to fusions to light there lies my rhythm in post-production mice i am your tool that's crazy <laughs> editing, i don't know who made that but <laughs> Oh man. I don't know what keyboard I have this on. Shift G. Oh yeah, there you go. Let's see. Do that. Oh, that's the right viewer. And we want the black background. Yeah. This is this is a script from um a reactor. I think it's like tool, something fusion toolbar, something like that. This is pretty cool. You can like mess with all the stuff that's that's in the viewer. Please explain to me the keyframe stretcher node. This is the one of the secrets of the templates that are made. The other than anim curves, the keyframe stretcher. So the keyframe stretcher is a node as well as a modifier. So you can use a node, but I would mainly use the modifier because you want to keyframe stretch certain keyframes rather than the whole thing. I mean, that's how my 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 text preset was made. It was using the, I believe, the stretcher when I should have used the modifier. But let's say we animate this. We're going to have it go from here to here real quick. We'll put it up like that. And then we want it to go from here back down to here to one. And then let's make this like that. Why not? Oh, shift L. No, sh shift F. There we go. Control T and drag and drag. Why not? So now we have this animation going up like this. But say we want between frame five and six for it to stay in the middle. We would need to go to our size here. We can right click this and we can hit insert and then we can do keyframe stretcher modifier. And this will give us a modifier that allows us to pick where we want our animation to freeze at. So we will have the whole animation, which is going to be from say zero to 11 frames. So we put that into here. So it starts from zero, ends at 11. And then we want it to freeze from five five to six. So that's what we put here, five, six. And then now if we play this back, we have this here, it stays there. And then at the end of the composition, it goes out or it should do that. I don't know why it's not doing that now. Maybe it's because it's not based on the whole clip. The more you know, but there you go. That's that's basically how it works or it's supposed to work there. It stays and then it goes back at the end if this was like extended all the way. So yeah, so that's very good for text templates and everything. Still can't delete that. Where do you find scripts and fuses besides Reactor? We Suck Less. That would be the place. So We Suck Less is a forum for fusion based users. And if you make an account, you can see all the stuff that they put up on the forum and that you can download yourself. So let's say like most of the people contribute their stuff to Reactor from We Suck Less because We Suck Less is like the, the parent kind of owner of Reactor. But there's still stuff on here that are still not uploaded. There was something I saw that was uploaded here that I don't think was, he, this guy didn't even make a video on it. It was a VFX study. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm blowing up his spot by by showing on a stream or not, but I, I don't think it's, it's, it's that big of a deal. But this, let's see. Yeah, VFX study, he made a image to clipboard script that's kind of e easy to use. So basically it, he, it makes a loader and whatever whatever image you copy on your clipboard, it's uploaded to the loader node. And then if you upload it, and if you take another copy of the clipboard and you can upload it again, it'll replace the one that's on the clipboard, I think. And that's just a nice, easy way to get stuff inside of Fusion Fast. But I, I use a different script that I'm making a video on. So you'll see that when that comes out. That kind of does the same thing, but I think, I think better, but I don't know. People would argue differently. But yeah, this is like you can, if you have an account, you can come and download this and that's where you can find stuff. Like, like how would you find it? I don't know. You just come across it, but even searching like DaVinci Resolve scripts on GitHub, like you can find a bunch of stuff there as well. Yes. If it could look, if it could look like this, 
Oh my god, we will be living good. I will never, if we get this keyframe panel, I will never complain about any DaVinci Resolve effect ever again. I don't care. I will not complain about anything ever again if, if this we get this. This is perfect. And it, it, it all matters what node you have selected. And say you have a bunch of different animated inputs that are here. You can just like select the one tool and it'll be there. And you know, even though it could kind of be pain in the ass if you have multiple keyframes and you have to go back and forth and select it and it'll be right there. I don't care. This is way better than whatever bullshit you got going up there. Okay. So please. Like magic, please. This is what we need. Is there any render in place kind of feature in Fusion for smoother playback? Technically, you could go to a node, right click it and hit cache to disk and it will cache all the frames on this node. And if you change anything before then, it sh I don't know if it gets rid of it or not, but it would mess this up. But if you know that you're not changing any nodes behind a certain point, you could probably cache this node, cache it to disk and it should work. I don't know if you, like, if you go back here in the purge cache that it'll get rid of it, but you know, if you make a bunch of adjustments, you can also purge cache and maybe that'll help play back. So right click the bottom where the stuff is. It tells you how much cache data is being taken up, purge cache. Uh, there's also the saver node, which you can actually export frames. So saver, it pops up and you could export the sequence from Fusion and then you could load it back in. I say use the saver in my GIF tutorial. If you want to see that, but if Smokey also has a video. It's called like Fusion pre-comping. That is it's technically not, it, it's, it's weird, it's the naming of it, but that should teach you how to use the saver and loader if you need to export a sequence like that, because that would be quote unquote rendering in place. Oh yeah, if you double click on any, if you make a change to a node and then you double click it, the, the name, it will reset the node to the default value real quick. Brother, please make a vibe CC on this stream. What do you mean a vibe CC? I don't know any of this, this, this AMV culture dog. What do you mean? Uh, all you gotta do, go here, go here. We're gonna push the oranges to be orange. We're gonna push the greens to be blue. And that's basically it. I, that's that's better than before, I think. Make a peach alt alt. Peach alt alt is real. Yeah, I can make a peach eight. That would be my my uh, my other channel. Peach, ooh, I mean, peach eight. Tell me that ain't After Effects Tutorials. That is After Effects Tutorials. That is my going to be my third channel. I'm announcing it now. Peach, A-E-T, Peach After Effects Tutorials, coming to you soon. There you go. You're going to be excited for that. If you like my explanations on DaVinci Resolve, don't worry. We're going to get it on After Effects as well. I've actually learned about a new node. It is called, I don't know what it's called. It's called Kernel in After Effects, but on DaVinci, it's like custom filter. That's what it's called. This is super cool. So basically, this allows you to make a bunch of filters based on this color matrix that's here. And here, I'll show you how to make one. If you want to make an edge detect, you can use this matrix size three, put a negative eight in the middle. Bam, we have an edge detect. That's crazy. Oops, let's get that here. Uh, XA and then here. That's edge detect. It's not the most detailed edge detect, but then you can do whatever to it. It's so, like, that's, it's crazy flexible. And then you can just change this number to whatever. And then it's like, it's like a sharpen right here or an unsharp mask. You go down more and then just thing else. I don't know, let's go the other way. Go the other way, it starts blurring it. So this is just cool. I think I think that's cool that you're able to do that with, the, with this node. But yeah, if, you, if you're interested in it, it's, um I think it's called uh image processing matrices. And you can mess around with that or watch Jake in Motion's Kernel video. Kernel, K-E-R-N-E-L. It's basically the same thing. Can you show the mid-shake settings? Sure. These are the, the values that are basically on here, but for whatever they are. So for the X, I have it on zero, so there's not moving nothing on the X. We can ignore all those first three controls. On the Y, it starts, it goes from a range of 0.1, that's the range of motion that it has, and it starts at a negative 0.8. The way that you can check is if you go to the spline graph, and I renamed them so it's easy, but um, let's see. Go to the Y, position Y, we can see the whole graph. And if we zoom into where that graph starts, it basically starts at the point at where zero is. So you want this first point at zero to be at zero and this at the last point of the graph to be at zero as well that's basically there at the same time so that's how you get that mid shake is what, is what i was describing see this is just the this is the graph of how the shake looks like but that's that's the most important part and you do the same thing you match it up with the rotation as well and then that should uh get your mid shake Everything.